Find yourself in the Beachview area of Pittsburgh? Check out the official pizza of this show, Slice on Broadway, sharing an abnormal obsession with pizza we can relate to. Check them out at SliceOnBroadway.com and tell them this show sent you. We them boys. This week on Boss Battle. Welcome everybody to Boss Battle number 114, the show in which the writers of InsertCoinToBegin.com get together and talk about video games. I'm your host, Bobby FJ Tom. But before we get to this sweet mummy center, this sarcophagus of a podcast, let's find out what everybody achieved this week. Chachi, how about you? What did you achieve this week? Uh, I went from not getting any uh, legendary armor to getting all of it. <laughs> nice. Um, so I, I seriously, I went like 40 hours without getting a piece of uh, legendary equipment, and in oh, like yeah. the past week, I've gotten all. Wow. So it worked out really well. Um, but that's about all I did. Nice. Uh, Sword, what'd you do this week? What did you achieve? What did I do this week? Uh, Hollywood <laughs> what Hulk. What did you do this week? Hulk. What did I do? Uh, Hollywood Hulk Hogan was available for a Crazy Taxi City Rush, so I was all <laughs> over that. Um, that was about the extent of it. Mostly mo- mobile. I was uh, I was on the road, so stuck with that. All right, and our special guest this week, Mikey from the Kiss Morning Freak Show. What'd you achieve this week in gaming? All I do is play Madden. Pop. <laughs> That's it. Like pop. just all Madden. Yeah, well, so, but actually, this week I did achieve something. I finally unlocked like these. Uh, style achievements to get this like Peyton Manning card and I don't know, I play way too much to, to do it, but <laughs> is that is that the legendary armor of Madden? <laughs> uh, basically, yeah, basically. Yeah. Wow. Yeah, Madden Ultimate seems my thing. That's all I play. But. Yeah, it, it's he's not even exaggerating too, because I mean your Xbox is on as much as mine is <laughs> and it's nothing but Madden. I feel shame too because like I'll see people like get on and then hop off and then like come back on later and they'll be like, Oh man, I'm still just here playing mad <laughs> They probably think I'm just sitting here all day just playing mad and uh, I'm I'm just you know, sometimes I'll leave my Xbox on and go do something else, but most of the time I'm just sitting there playing mad. I don't know. It's, it's, and with Madden, I used to just play it, and then, like, you know, I'd play a couple seasons, and then I'd get old. But then they got this Madden Ultimate Team thing where you, like, buy packs and get cards, and, oh, man, it's just a mess. It's ruining my life. Yeah, collectible trading cards are just the ruination of everything gaming-related. It is. Because <laughs> it's, it's like... the video games, apps, everything. It's, it's, like, it's like the Pokemon of, of... You just have to get them all. <laughs> I, I, I'm a grown man. And I play NFL Pokemon. Peyton <laughs> <laughs> Manning, I choose you. Yeah, yeah. I just got pumped up because I got a Peyton Manning card that I've been like trying to get for two weeks. So. <laughs> and, and they come out of little footballs, and he's just like, the chicken parm is really good. <laughs> And then I, I try to get Bob all excited about it, too, because he, he plays, too, but he doesn't get quite as, like, insane about it as I do. And I'll be like, yo, man, I got all, I, I got all these cool cards that I can't even use, man. Just get on. I'll trade them to you. <laughs> it's like I just want him to be a part of it with me, you know? I want to share my... Wow. All right, and I achieved uh, – I, I played Destiny a little bit. Chachi will be mad at me because I accidentally played the same mission over again, <laughs> and uh, I'm still on level three. So, And I was just so tired. I died so many times on it too, and I was just like, I'm going to bed. I didn't hardly play anything this weekend. but I, And I did win, win a – I almost won a King of the Ring on the uh, Supercard, WWE Supercard, which is like WWE Pokemon. So. <laughs> What did we all achieve in video game Pokemon this week? <laughs> <laughs> I, I, I just checked in on my King of the Ring before the show, to be honest. So I got the WWE City badge in Pokemon. <laughs> nice. <laughs> all right. Um, oh, and uh, from, from Twitter, we had one from Buddy Landell who said, His Guardian is now fully armored in legendary gear, and he likes to put it all on and walk around the tower like he owns the place. <laughs> so that's pretty cool. There you go. Well, All right. It, it's not it's not even a joke because I mean it gets to the point where you have people sending you messages every five minutes and it's always the same thing that I they either want you to uh, join a guild mm-hmm. or they want to know where you got a piece of equipment from 
but you get that piece of ass. Man. Yeah, it, I mean, <laughs> so every five minutes I'm getting Xbox messages asking <laughs> me where I got something or asking me if I want to run a mission with them. Oh. And I'm just like, no. No, no way. <laughs> where do you get that? That's Xbox Live Gold Prostitution. <laughs> yeah, that's exactly it. <laughs> uh, all right. Uh, joining us this week is Mikey. Uh, Mikey, you're a, a morning show host from P- Pittsburgh here. Um, tell us a little about about your show and uh, what uh, games you played when you were a kid compared to what you play now. We heard you play Madden now. so. Yeah, I honestly only play Madden now. It's like <laughs> exclusive. Like I want to branch out into other games, but I don't know, man. I just, you know, you just get hooked on that one game. I usually mm. play one game at a time and then I'll move on to something else, but... <laughs> some reason, I've just been stuck on that. But nice. uh, I do the uh, show every morning with my uh, my best friend Bob. You mm-hmm. guys all know that. And yep. For I don't know years now, and you know we just it's an awesome job. It's barely a job, but uh, we have a good time, and everybody likes us in Pittsburgh, and we get really good ratings, and that's about it. It's fun. Cool. And I, I have to say that ninety percent of the time when I listen to you guys. Every ten minutes, the first thought that pops into my head is, "How the hell do you guys get paid to do that?" <laughs> no, I, I still, I still wonder that myself. I, I, I like get my check, and I'm just like, I can't even believe it. You know? What? Why don't you tell us what you did this morning? <laughs> morning with Taylor Swift thing. Yes, that was that was great. <laughs> Taylor Swift came out with, like, this new song called Out of the Woods. And, like, whenever I hear the, the title of a Taylor Swift song, I just for some reason start thinking in my head, like, exactly how the lyrics <laughs> are going to go. You know, like, I'm in the woods and I'm looking for you. It's like, it's all this, this yep. kind of thing. So this morning I just started singing my own version of it. <laughs> yeah, it was, it was pretty it was, cool. it was greatness. <laughs> To, to, like do a radio show every morning would be cool if it was just me, but the fact that I get to do it with like the, the kid I grew up with, basically, <laughs> the best friends with like since we were like ten, that's just like you know it's a, it's like real life cheat code on <laughs> the Konami code for life. It really is. It really is. It really is. Uh, what games did you used to play when you were a kid? Um, you know, the regular just. You know, Mario Brothers and stuff like that, the old school Nintendo, um, you know, Duck Hunt. And then when sports games started coming in, like ice hockey, um, I remember baseball stars was really mm-hmm. cool back in the day. All those, like, baseball games I used to play a lot. Um, I think of what else I really used to play. I mean, when Sega came out, it was all Sonic the Hedgehog. Last processing. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Chrono Trigger on. Um, oh wow. Super Nintendo. Yeah. yeah. Chrono Trigger. That was a good yeah. game back in the day. RPG. Yeah. yeah, I didn't. I don't really get too like deep into RPG games, but Chrono Trigger for some reason that was, that was it for me. That was uh, that was a good one. Super Mario RPG was my gateway drug into RPGs. Well, <laughs> that's that's what led you in the path down there. Yeah, path yeah. That, that sent me down the dark path. Yeah, it was Chrono Trigger for me, but now I'm just playing grown man Pokemon Madden Dark. <laughs> Wait, I gotta level up Peyton Manning. Yeah. <laughs> uh, my Richard Sherman is level 50. Man, uh, it's crazy, though, how, like, uh, obsessed you just get with, with games and stuff like that, man. It's, you know, and it's, it's weird, too, because I have a daughter now, and she plays like uh, like the Harry Potter like Lego games and stuff like that. Mm-hmm. I just look at her, I'm just like, man, you have got the same problem. <laughs> it's it's a good habit to have, though. Yeah, <laughs> All right, what's your all time favorite game? Oh man, all time favorite game. If I had to pick one, man, I want to say Madden. That is just so. <laughs> That is the answer to everything. <laughs> he invented the turducken. I'm trying to think. No, you know what? You know what I think is like like my favorite like gaming kind of experience that I've I really had, like really, really enjoyed playing and like couldn't wait to get home and play it with Mass Effect 3. Oh nice. 
Mass Factory, yeah, that was just just such a like different game because I usually don't play a game like that. Mm-hmm. But yeah, I just I got really into that. So I played Mass Effect 2, and I didn't finish 3, so maybe one day I'll go back and finish 3. Yeah, I think 2 was my first Mass Effect that I that I played, and then I, I played 3, like like I said. I, I don't play more than one game at a time. I will just get on one game and just get obsessed with it for, like, <laughs> one time. I but, have I have gaming ADD. I go ADHD. I just can't focus on one game at a time. <laughs> See, I used to do that with, like, like I used to have Gamefly, and I used to just mm-hmm. do a game for, like, a week or two and then send it back. But then I was just, I don't know, I just I, I just didn't stop doing that because I, I realized that I was just getting a game, and I was holding it for, like, three or four months <laughs> at a time. Yeah. I was like, this is kind of defeating the purpose. I should just go buy this game. Yeah. Um, I would do that as well, but I wouldn't play the game. i just hold it and not, <laughs> and not, like, set it aside and play the games that I had. Yeah. So it's kind of like Netflix. Mass Effect Three though was uh, was an awesome game. I have to say that's probably one of my favorite games of all time. Though. Awesome. Definitely. All right, Chachi, you want to take us around the net? Uh, yeah, I'm gonna die though. Hold on. No, okay. I'm kidding. Um, Are you playing games during the show? I was. I'm playing <laughs> Destiny because that's my game of the moment right now. I thought about that if that was acceptable, but I decided not to. I'm just. <laughs> <laughs> I- Boards in the background. <laughs> I do it every week. I can't help it. It just happens. Um, I always get in trouble for playing games. On the I do. <laughs> and every week I'm getting yelled at because I pay more attention to the game. Um, but anyhow, it's time for video game theme things from around the internet. Net, 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 net. 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 All right, so let's go with the runners up uh, this week. I got a. I found a bed for Bobby. Yay! Um, it's this giant. It looks like a giant pillow, but it has a pouch. Um, but it's a giant Pikachu bed. Oh, wow. Yeah. Um, it weighs yeah. Uh, 33 pounds and has wow. a washable cover. <laughs> it has a washable cover, too? Yeah, but uh, it, from the pictures, it kind of looks like that you just crawl in like this pouch. No, but, does uh, it? I asked you this earlier, but I'm going to ask you again for podcast reasons. Yeah. Uh, does it come with the lovely Japanese lady that is in that bed? <laughs> no, it does not. Um, it, it, the couch, the couch. <laughs> Surprise! Uh, it, it, it comes in at 39,800 yen, which is uh, 371 U.S. style dollars. Wow. So I don't don't think you pay enough for the the lovely looking Japanese woman in the Pikachu pouch. How much was um, how much would be shipping and handling with her and without her? <laughs> um, <laughs> I I wouldn't even know how to begin to figure that out. <laughs> but you'd be surprised. I just bought my Halloween costume from Japan on Amazon. I got did it, it for free. Did it all, did it also come with a li- lovely Japanese lady in it? Uh, <laughs> it <not>. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, she if she shows up at your door wearing the costume. <laughs> I, th- I think Bob's is gonna come with that in. <laughs> yeah, Bob ordered a uh, a blue unicorn onesie from this time, so there may be a small Japanese bride coming over to deal with that. Oh my! <laughs> but it, it, if I had a bigger house and more money, I would probably buy a Pikachu. And just stick it in a corner somewhere. It kind of looks. Up. It kind of looks like a beanbag chair. Yeah, like I, I honestly, I probably wouldn't use it. I would probably just find like a, a corner house in one of the rooms that don't get used very often, and just leave it there. So if you accidentally walk into that room, bam! Giant Pikachu staring at you. No, nice. I, I, I'd sleep in the thing. That that's my bed. <laughs> that that's just my bed from then on. I think somebody I'm worried having a giant Pikachu chair though, because you know if you have like uh, like animals, like a cat or a dog, if you have like a chair like a love sack or a protection, and they sit on it too long and then it gets hairy, then it's just a sleepy chair. <laughs> Everybody has a chair like that, right? Well, yeah. My Pikachu yeah. has hair. Nobody wants a big hairy Pikachu. <laughs> Nobody wants that. Especially oh, this, especially where the dog or cat sits. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> I just put like a, a child gate up around it. It would look suspect. Suspect. Put up a giant hair. fence. Put plastic on it like it's the good couch. Sit on the Pikachu. Scotch guard that. Scotch guard that Pikachu. <laughs> um. Uh, uh, uh. Next up on the uh the runner runners up. Uh, four men from Berks County. 
uh, were arrested because they were smuggling uh, kilos of cocaine. <laughs> smuggling cocaine or smuggling? Smuggling. I'm sorry. Smuggling. <laughs> well, either way. Okay. Either way. Um, kilos of cocaine inside of Xbox consoles. Jeez. Nice. <laughs> so, uh, uh, they're from, I don't know, they were caught in Philadelphia, which seems... Of weird, course. But, um, uh, of course Philadelphia would have that happen. <laughs> Uh, so, uh, into the actual body of the post. Um, someone took the time to collect every start screen from every Game Boy uh, game ever. Wow. And compile it into a two-hour, 42-minute long YouTube video. That was like that uh, uh, NES one they did, too. Yeah. Um, I made it two minutes before I, I grew <laughs> tired of it and moved on. Um, I give the guy credit for actually compiling it all, but I don't think anyone can actually watch the whole thing. I, I made it four minutes on the Nintendo one, and then I just yeah. started realizing they were actually kind of all the same. and <laughs> <laughs> They all just started blending together. And... I was like trying to wait for like recognizable titles and stuff, and it was just, man, there are so many games. That you... like, weren't, weren't most of them like Japanese titles, too, that didn't yeah, come to the U.S.? Yeah. yeah. That's crazy. I somebody took the time to, to do that. Yeah, especially when there's so many video games that you can play now. Yeah. Like, you, you mean to tell me you went and collected all of these instead of sitting down and playing a game? That's just somebody who's sitting around thinking, like, I I have thought of something right now that is not on the internet. <laughs> I, I can do it. It may, it may be my life's work, you know? Mm-hmm. This may take me years to do, but somebody has to do this, and that guy had to do it. It was his American novel, great American novel. <laughs> <laughs> he could tell his kids, I'm the one who put all the Game Boy start screens up on YouTube. I did that. Uh, next up, there's a, a gamer who uh, named Carl Jobst who beat three games at the same time in less than an hour. Wow. Um, in, in under uh, 60 minutes, it's uh, 52 minutes and 51 seconds, he beat Mario 64, Ocarina of Time, and GoldenEye 64. How the hell is that possible? Did he play them all at the same time? No. Oh, um, okay. he, what he did was when one was loading, he swapped to the other. Or to oh, one of the okay. others, um, and so mainly he played Goldeneye in the first like five minutes of it, and let the uh, the intro uh, story go for Mario and Zelda, and then he would pick up Mario and do a level, or pick up Zelda and do a part. Um, but he did all three speed runs within the same hour, which just is insane to me. Wow, I wouldn't be able to do that. No. And shows uh, for those on on audio, um, it, it's showing like all three screens and and, and him, so you can kind of sync everything up. What's going on there? It, it is interesting because like yeah, he lo- loads a level, and I I see him go over and do something in Ocarina. I haven't seen him do much Goldeneye from a little bit. I've been bouncing around this video so far. Wait, that's you the... haven't you haven't seen him do Goldeneye because that's what he starts with. Well, I I didn't I didn't start at the beginning. Oh okay. Sword. It, it's like a book. You gotta start at the beginning. Ah, no, YouTube's no. I'm too ADD for YouTube's <laughs> like that. Come on. Plus, plus, you put in like a three hour and an hour video. I can't. Yeah. Uh, and last but not least, uh, a few months ago we went through a large video game collection on eBay. Uh, well, someone else is doing it again uh, with their collection. One hundred sixty-four thousand dollars currently on eBay. Wow. Um, the seller has declined 366 offers. Wow. So I don't know if these are just like people being assholes on eBay and they're like, oh, I'll give you five bucks for the whole thing. And he's just declining it. Or if he's serious, if he's getting serious offers and just being like, no, it's not what I want. He's just showing off his collection. But I mean, the dude has over 5,700 video games and 50 different systems. Uh, but it's uh, the complete Nintendo, complete Super Nintendo, uh, complete 64, plus the consoles to go with it, uh, with uh, minus the one or two impossible games to get. But he did get replica, uh, 
duplications of uh, some of the harder ones, with the exception of world class track meet. Yeah. <laughs> so uh, the games are there, but they're not actual copies of them. But it, this this thing is getting over. Uh, at the time, it was fourteen hundred views an hour on wow. eBay, and no one's actually bidding on it. It's all just make offer. I'm trying to say. I'm trying to save up for that Pikachu bet. I'm sorry, I can't bet on it. Yeah, but yeah, it, <laughs> that guy's here. Maybe he to pop a couple. <laughs> but uh, it, he he, it's buy it now or make offer. Those are the only two options you get on this. Man. So, uh, yeah, it, it's uh, I, I would sell body parts if I were allowed. <laughs> I don't even get a collection. You know, like is that is that somebody who just was like playing games the whole time and then was just like, wow, I'm only like a hundred games away from having all the Nintendo games. Might as well try to get them all here. I and I think that's exactly what happened. Like, I it, I mean, that's the only way that it could happen. At some point in your life, like either your mom's gonna tell you you have to sell them all and move out, or your wife is just gonna be like, "No, this can't happen." Or you're gonna reproduce and have a child and realize, "All right, this is my, my this is my kid's college fund right here. It has to go." But <laughs> kids, one day, one. I think what happened in this case is he was moving and didn't want to take it all with him. Mm-hmm. <laughs> you can't because take it all with you when you die. In the YouTube video, um, he said that like it's it's eleven minutes long and it goes through the entire collection. But it, it sounds like he he said that uh, he's getting ready to move and he's boxing it all up. So I think the dude is just done carrying it with him. Hey, yeah. he goes in, he, he this one I did watch cover to cover by the way, Chach. Um, he, he says like. Like there, there, there's a certain point where he talks about like some of the custom cases that he did. They talk about mm-hmm. how all the the shelves were custom made. Like this guy, this was his like guy that made the Enterprise in his garage level of dedication. <laughs> <laughs> like, it's all holodeck. They don't actually exist. <laughs> it, it's yeah. It, it had been like this is the kid that like spent his allowance on every new game that came out and just just yeah. became a completionist. Yeah, well, maybe that's it. Maybe he's just some rich kid. Yeah. That's it. It's actually the kid from Brewster's Millions. <laughs> maybe maybe so, he was a game so, reviewer. I I wish I were kidding when I say this, but if I could have a collection like that, I would in a heartbeat. Mm-hmm. To the point where I might run it by Chris just to make sure it's okay before I even bother to start. Just so you know, though, one day, if we have wives, they're going to Nicolas Cage us. <laughs> <laughs> and we're gonna have to get rid of stuff. <laughs> I think that'd be too many video games for me to process. Yeah. But yet, I've already shared my story about how I can't play more than one game at a time. So that may that would like send me into some sort of panic if I actually Mike, physically saw that many video games in front of me. Mikey just has like twelve copies <laughs> of every Madden game. I, do it. I honestly think that I would only want to do that with Nintendo. The original NES. Oh, yeah, yeah. Like, if I could have a wall that was just every NES game, yeah. just to say that I had them, you, you know, I, I would be okay with you know, that. You know, the thought I had when the story first came up, uh, like, a week ago, right, um, was, wow, I'd love to have that collection, then just put all the ROMs on one of those main units, and I legally own everything, and everything is just display. <laughs> yeah. Like, and then... I think- it, I think Super Nintendo I could do it with, too. I think Super Nintendo, there's enough games over time that were, like, kind of classic enough to where, you know, like, it, it would kind of be cool to have every Super Nintendo game. Because I almost always forget about how awesome Super Nintendo was, you know? Cause, yeah, it, it's, like, it's very, it has very underrated games. I mean, look at- just, like, the 8-bit Nintendo, the original, and then there was, you know, Nintendo 64. And Super Nintendo always gets lost in that shuffle. Mm-hmm. Look at this custom shelf he did for the 32X and Game Gear games. <laughs> wow. 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 Yes, that is serious right there. Man. My house my house looks like a GameStop. <laughs> it basically <laughs> is. And the other idea was like, why not just like open a video game library museum something or other? Yeah. yeah. Donate it to that video game museum in Texas. Be that no, video no, game museum. Because honestly, if I had that collection... Yeah, Sorg, I've known you for like 15 years. 
you would be lucky if I even let you breathe on it. <laughs> <laughs> like, I, once the collection was done, it would just be like an inch thick sheet of plexiglass. <laughs> You would have that Pokemon seat cover all over it. Right. <laughs> so, I mean, it would just be locked up. No cat hair on it. <laughs> all right, guys. Uh, before we get to the things that you should be made aware of, uh, we're, uh, we have a little plug here. Um, we're playing video games for charity for 24 hours on October 25th. Um, you can go to insertcointobegin.com, and there's a, a banner, I believe, uh, to go donate to us. Uh, but we're raising money for Children's Hospital. I think we're playing for St. Vincent's Children's Hospital of Erie. Mm -hmm. um, and we're live streaming on Sorgatron Media's network page. Uh, the link is bit.ly slash extra life insert coin. So you can go in and donate if you'd like. All right, now it's time for some things we should be, you should be made aware of. We're going to start with some news bits here. Guys, you know how we're obsessed with the WWE two, the, the WWE uh, card game? Or some of us, the Madden card game, some apparently. Us, yes, or some of us, <laughs> the Madden card game. Uh, there's a basketball one. Of course there is. Uh, yeah, uh, 2K, uh, just re they're releasing it. Uh, it's... It's it's pretty pretty similar to uh, Supercard. This looks very uh, similar to Supercard. It looks very similar, only with the basketball background. Wait a minute. <laughs> <laughs> and I hope the cards like hop around like the WWE cards do. Uh, but they said there's going to be a thousand cards, uh, over a thousand cards, and you can and there's in-app purchases, and it's going to have a whole bunch of uh, the teams and players and that you love in the NBA. I gotta stay away from this. <laughs> Yeah, it, the WWE game is such an obsession right now. I don't need to get into that either. It's it's gonna be too <laughs> hard for me. All right, and uh, Lego Batman Three, which we which we said about last week, and next week we're gonna we're gonna have Mad Mike on to talk about. Uh, he played Lego uh, Batman Three at Comic Con in New York City, so we're gonna have him on next week to talk about that. But we mentioned that Kevin Smith was gonna be in the game. Yes. They also announced that Conan O'Brien is gonna be in the game. <laughs> And, and and please, God, let there be the flaming sea from when they made that on on Conan when he was. I think it was it when he was on the Tonight Show, or the TBS show, show still. Oh, no, it had to be the TBS show because I think it was Warner Brothers. I forgot he was even on the Tonight Show. Yeah, he was on for like. That was a little flip of uh, late night right there. <laughs> yeah, it was it was great though. That stupid Jay Leno had to ruin it. Yeah. Anyways, moving on. <laughs> um, they also recently revealed Detective Chimp. Mad Hatter, Deadshot, Deathstroke, Caliban, Polka Dot Man, and Music Meister as playable characters. Am really seeing... dipping deep into that DC vault. There, Did guys. I read the Condiment King from the animated DC yes. series? Yes, the Condiment King and Man Bat. Man Bat. <laughs> Man Bat. Yeah, from the from the uh, Batman animated series. Uh, yeah, Man Bat. Man Bat was legit. That, that, and, that... And they're also they're also um, going to have two Looney Tunes characters, Green Loon Turn, <laughs> and Duck and the Duck Dodgers are going to be on it also. So, wait, That's are we talking cool. about Lego Batman Three? Yes, Lego Batman Three. Yeah, I don't care about any of other characters other than Conan O'Brien and <laughs> Kevin Smith. Kevin Smith, yeah, yeah. and and they also announced a, a, an Arrow D DLC pack based on the show Arrow. So, I mean, I I don't I don't care. <laughs> Just give me, give me the fat man. I want, I want Kevin Smith and uh, Conan O'Brien to battle it out <laughs> via Lego with Man Bat. <laughs> with Man Bat. <laughs> All right, and uh, fi finally for our news bits here, um, Xbox One announced today the, the the Vine app is available on Xbox One. Oh boy! <laughs> yeah, uh -huh. so you can watch videos uh, on on your Xbox. You, you can, can watch vines Xbox. of Mikey and Bob in the bathroom on your yeah, Xbox yeah, now. You can. Pretty much all we do, bathroom <laughs> in the elevator. That's yep. <laughs> and and you can watch the vine. You you can watch. You can't use the Kinect camera yet to make your own vines on the Xbox One. But they said maybe in future updates that'll happen. But you can just watch like vines, like uh, my mom's car. <laughs> oh my gosh, man! <laughs> and so many other ones. Uh, you can now watch them on Xbox One. So yay! Another use for the Xbox One. Yay. I don't know if I could really watch Vines on my TV. Like, yeah, that would get annoying though. Six the, seconds, like the quality, the the, <laughs> the quality, <laughs> right? Oh. I don't know. They don't yep. go up that high a quality. <laughs> no, it doesn't seem like it. No, I don't know how that would come out. But and, and it would be like 
the cameras are like somebody would use their camera as like standing straight up the vertical camera on their yeah. iPhone. Just it's, wouldn't wouldn't translate well. It's the worst ever. Like still in 2014, and that's still like oh, <laughs> no. like whenever you see, like you get a link to a good video or something, and as soon as you see that. It basically ruins the video. Like yeah. it already has taken that video points down. It's like <laughs> really we can't we haven't flipped the camera yet. I actively thrash any indie wrestler that does their promo with their camera like that. Like I'm like, <laughs> come on. Like like people I know, and I'm like, no, don't do, come on, come on. Yeah, turn yeah. it sideways. Yeah. Learn how to use your lose. You learn how to use it, please. <laughs> All right, and um. That, guys, the WWE 2K15 uh, soundtrack was announced, and DLC was announced today, so we're going to get to the soundtrack first. <laughs> What's so funny, Chachi? I'm sorry. I just uh, We have Mikey on the show, but his partner, Bob, just sent out a tweet of uh-huh. his uh, costume for <laughs> of his his costume. Dubu, and he's oh, the no. Minecraft guy. Oh, he's the Minecraft guy? Oh, no. Yeah. Here it is. Steve from Minecraft. So there you go. Video games tying into Mike and Bob's show. <laughs> that is, um, I can tell you exactly where that picture is from. That was from uh, last year at Halloween at Bob's house. He, <laughs> he said some fat kid in his neighborhood was dressed up like that. <laughs> he didn't want the Minecraft head anymore. So he just, it, it, in almost like a, like, a, like a large person moment of clarity... <laughs> He asked Bob if he could or, take it off and just leave it on his porch. And Bob was just like, what, you just don't want to wear it anymore? He's just like, no, I, just, I don't want it anymore. I don't want to wear it or anything. Bob it. <laughs> so then Bob took a picture of him with the Minecraft head on, like giving thumbs up. Like, so, yeah. the, the tale of the fat kid neglection and the Minecraft helmet. <laughs> Bob really does look like a Minecraft character, though. <laughs> Oh, my. Kind of weird. <laughs> All right. Uh, getting back to the WWE 2K15 soundtrack. It's cult- It's been cultivated by John Cena, everybody. Oh. So you know there's quality in, in, in the uh, soundtrack here. Uh, let's go through some of the tracks here. Wiz Khalifa and John Cena all day. A lot of fire on that track. I, yeah. I, I, I've heard it. That is a lot of fire. Uh, B.O.B.'s Ready. Uh, Rudimentals Free. Hmm. Uh, featuring Emily Sunday and Nas, mm. uh, Wiz, Wiz Khalifa, We Dem Boys, uh, Flo Rida, Wild Ones, which is a WWE staple. <laughs> <laughs> it's the WrestleMania 28 version, so you know it's good. Man, I I hate that song with. A- <laughs> That's the whole because I worked at a stage that played it like at 1,200 <laughs> times over the course of its entirety since. So- been out, but oh, it's, it uses improper grammar at the, the, the that woman. It does at the very end when it says it's supposed to say like running with wolves, and it, <laughs> the lady sings running with wolves, like W O O F. Running with wolves, and I'm on the prowl. Like at the very end of the song, running with wolves, and, uh, and it just like oh, god, it drives me nuts. Like, you know, running with wolves. Or, Okay, this is a kid-friendly song. Knife Party by Bonfire. <laughs> I've never heard that song of you guys. This on the wrestling soundtrack, too. <laughs> and, and what matches does a knife party play? <laughs> New, Jack. A knife New match Jack. Mode. New Jack matches, for sure. Oh, Big, nice. Big Smo Workin' featuring Alexander King. Uh, is it sad that I know who Big Smo is? <laughs> <laughs> Listen, you know... Does it, do anyone say what a big Smo is? Yes, I do. He, he's um, a reality show. He's like a country uh, singer rapper. <laughs> and I just know that my wife watches it all the time. And sometimes I'll just like sit there and get sucked into it. And I'll be like, what, what am I watching? <laughs> well, um, see, the thing is, I saw the commercial for the show. Yeah. And I'm like, there's no way this dude is uh, good enough to be a country rapper. No. So I went on YouTube. Oh, who, who I, was found, I found myself getting sucked in for like 45 minutes just listening to his country rap songs. Is he? Is, wait, I got a legitimate question. Is he as good as Cowboy Troy from <laughs> Big and Rich? I mean, that bar is so high. That <laughs> Troy bar is so high. I saw the episode where he was working on a song with, uh, with Hootie. 
uh, Darius Rucker from Hootie and the Blowfish. The Hootie. And that's one of the low, low, uh, low points of my life when I, <laughs> <laughs> I, I, mean, was, I was watching a country rapper show where <laughs> one invisited Hootie to do a track with. We got uh, Mystery Skulls g -g 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 Ghost. That's just Ghost. I just wanted to say g -g 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 Ghost again. Uh, Royal Blood, come on over. And Wiz Khalifa and John Cena breaks. Mm. So I, the I, oh, like, go ahead. I like the All Bank track better than than breaks. Okay, and uh, the additional uh, end game soundtrack also features Avenged Sevenfold, Dizzy Rascal, and Rise Against. And guess who it does not fit does not feature? Nickelback. Let's give let's give the well Nickelback also and and let's give the WWE a round of applause when we first heard them say country. We thought for sure that Florida Georgia Line was going to be on the soundtrack, but they're not. Yay! Uh, so, yeah, that ends that national nightmare. All right, then, and WWE also announced that there's going to be $50 worth of downloadable content for WWE 2K15. Jeez. Yeah, uh, they announced that uh, the, the, you can buy the Accelerator, which is $1.99 and it locks all the game content, except for DLC, of course. Uh, <laughs> Why would and you buy that? I bought it for 2K14. <laughs> I'm an idiot. It was only 99 cents. It was half off. What, like the add-on stuff? Yeah. It was like the new Konami code. Oh, man. I don't even want to tell you the version of Madden I bought. It. <laughs> <laughs> no, no. I can understand yeah. buying DLC. I, I just don't understand buying something that unlocks it all for you. Yeah. Like, that takes something out of the game, I, I think. Nah, not really. I'm lazy. <laughs> you think I'm going to sit there long enough to unlock all that stuff? No. I do. I do. <laughs> <laughs> but they also uh, new moves pack. Uh, a NXT arrival, which includes Emma, uh, JBL, okay, uh, Adam Rose, and the Ascension. Uh, a WCW pack, which features Fit Finley, Lord Steven Regal, Bam Bam Bigelow, da Diamond Dallas Page, and Lex Luger. Uh, the Hall of Pain. Which focuses on the top matches of Mark Henry. <laughs> oh my! <laughs> uh, that's that's a seller right there. Uh, <laughs> wait to the next pack here. One more match. This deals with Randy Orton's rivalry with Christian in 2011. <laughs> uh, the Path of the Warrior. Uh, it highlights the career of Ultimate Warrior, which is pretty cool. Yeah, that's sweet. Um, you can get additional managers, uh, Jimmy Hart, Bobby the Brain Heenan, Paul Bearer, Sensational Sherry, Sid Justice, and General Adnan. Also Howard Finkel. Um, and eight, eight playable arenas such as uh, WrestleMania, SummerSlam, Madison Square Garden, Saturday Night's Main Event. Um, and guys, get this. Page is free. But, o but only if you buy the... the, the uh, the uh, season pass for twenty four ninety nine. So basically, Paige is not free. <laughs> you could buy Paige okay, for twenty four ninety nine and get the DLC free. That would be worth it. All right, hold on, wait. So you're telling me that you can't play as a two time Diva champion? No, unless you buy the thing. Unless you buy her. Yeah, unless you unless you buy her for twenty four ninety nine and get the rest of the DLC for free. Wow. <laughs> So, also, okay. can I point out that there's no Enzo Amore, so I don't want to buy the game. <laughs> is there any uh, Mark Madden character in this one? <laughs> oh, he should be in that Howard Finkel pack. Have we gotten in there? I know, when you were talking about the, w the WCW package. Yeah, yeah. They have Madden in there. Man, if they just have him sitting and eating a Subway sandwich at ringside. <laughs> oh, <he'd have> <laughs> oh, man. <laughs> All right, and uh, guys, uh, arcades might be making a comeback. Um, it was announced, uh, Sorg, I think you posted this this week, uh, about the Star Wars pod, battle pod. Yeah, let me tell you about some experiences I had this weekend. Uh, we were very excited because we stopped at the, uh, uh, just off the turnpike, uh, the gateway, or, or, or was it? Breezeway, it or breezeway? whatever it's called. Breezeway? 
um but it's the gateway truck stop or whatever right and uh we're like video arcade okay let's see what this is about um one else it's called video arcade i've never seen it, that terminology on the side of a building for a while that wasn't in neon lights um so we went and checked it out by the way there's a radio shack in here too wow um, did you go back in time sort i think i think i did uh so we go and it's just like it's a, there's like a few of those like video gambling machines that don't really pay out money there's a uh, like super off-road the vid- the the 3d version there's a uh, arctic iron, iron man stewart's off-road yeah yeah there's, wow. there's the arctic uh arctic thunder or hydro thunder or whatever um there was a one of those police 911 machines with the sensor bar that you actually move there's like a boxing version of it at david busters too very very sad right there was a um there was a uh what's the game uh uh what's the game they play at, at uh at tailgate parties um oh. no not beer pong Cornhole? cornhole there was a cornhole there's a virtual cornhole machine guys um, virtual cornhole not so, even real cornhole that they could have easily set up by themselves yeah there was pool tables so why not right <laughs> so, I've, I've played the virtual cornhole game before <laughs> at the bar, and i had that same thing i'm thinking like this could not be virtual <laughs> So I was I was very excited when a story came across my wire about the Star Wars battle pod uh, that shows that arcades aren't dead. They're just very different from Polygon this week. Um, So it's very, you know, it's, you know, what you expect from a Star Wars arcade game. You got your tunnel run. You got, you know, uh, you know, all those key scenes. Right. But they talk a good bit about, um, of course, Namco is still putting out. I think they said like like a few titles every year like i think they said like 12 titles every year um this thing is something you sit in it's something bigger um it's something that they can program and put more levels in later they're they were giving it uh kind of a grand uh grand debut they're going to put in some major um uh you know arcades later on uh this year uh it's just kind of an idea that like this is what arcades are now are are, are, are things like this uh, these these big experiences that you can't do at home, right? Because anytime yeah. you see an arcade, when's the last time you saw an arcade machine that had a joystick that you're like, well, is that really any different than what I can do at home? I remember uh, playing, what was it Tekken 5? And, you know, there was a Tekken 5 for PlayStation two months later and it looked exactly the same. You know, there was there's there's no reason to have to go to an arcade anymore. Uh, but these these are, and it was it was a really cool look at the kind of the philosophy on it. There so. is a reason, and it's called virtual cornhole. <laughs> virtual cornhole. There you go. So, so, so that that was that was kind of my uh, arcade experience, and and, and I love this love the story. Kind of came out right around that. So also also I think arcades are kind of coming back socially. You know, a bit. Um, there's there's barcades like. Uh, Matt, Matt Carlin's posted on it from right. our Facebook page this week that um, a guy's trying to get a, a barcade built in Pittsburgh. Like he's looking at two cities to expand his business to. Uh, one's Indiana, or two states, Indiana and Pittsburgh. Well, Pittsburgh's not a state, but, so, but the, the, he's looking at those two areas to expand into. And then, like we we have like Dave and Buster's and all that right, stuff. Right, right. And Dave and Buster's, I've always loved Dave and Buster's. But then, I, like I, I would go back like yearly for my birthday or other people's you know mm-hmm. events and stuff. And it's just like this hasn't changed. You know, yeah. um, there, there was nothing progressing there. And, and what an arcades is, you know, unless you go to a resort, Disney World, I'm sure has a tremendous arcade. Or something, right? Because they'll get the battle pods or whatever new uh, the the five things that come out every year from Namco, you know. Um, but I mean, it, it, it's a different animal. And Dave and Buster's too is like they they have a lot of the apps. They turn those into like <laughs> games now, like like Fruit Ninja and stuff like that. And just yeah. like you were saying before, it's like I can play this on my phone right now. I don't need to drive to Dave and Buster's for yeah, like. But it's, yeah, but it's giant. <laughs> the fruit ninja experience, so I can just, uh, you know, oh, I've been doing this so long with my finger, I just want to do it with my whole paw, damn it. Oh, thank you, Caden Buster, for giving me this opportunity. Wow. I don't know. Still, though, you get tickets, so we got that going yeah, yeah. for you. You do get tickets. <laughs> with a giant Pokemon chair at the end of the night. <laughs> Take that home and get your cat fur on it. Yeah. <laughs> All right, uh, it's going to bring us to our final bottle or final battle question. Um, uh, what could Call of Duty do uh, 
Wait, what does Call of Duty have to do to get you guys to come back to the next installment of Call of Duty? I know, Chachi, you said you're going to get it. I'm on the fence. Mikey, you said you probably wouldn't play it. Um, they announced today that um, you get a free upgrade if you buy it digitally. Like, say you bought it on a Xbox 360 for up to, till I think it was uh, March 31st, 2015, you can upgrade your digital version to the Xbox uh, One or PS4 if you bought it for the 360. Like, say you weren't going to get a, a console yet, mm -hmm. and then you decide later on you want to get a, a new console, you can upgrade it like that. They did that same thing kind of for Destiny 2. Is that enough? I don't think it's enough. What do you guys think? You know what Call of Duty has to do to get me to buy the next game? Mm -hmm. Release a game. <laughs> because, I mean, granted... The 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 six to eight hour story mode isn't enough for the game yeah. to exist. Right. However, what I'm hoping is that they fix all of the the problems with the ghost multiplayer, so that I'm not running around for twelve minutes trying to find someone to kill. Yeah, that's what happened with the last one. It was, just, I mean, I I had the last one i didn't even play early at all because i i think we were all on for like a couple weekends mm -hmm. and then mm -hmm. it just got boring man. yeah we we dropped off real fast on the last we're one we're huge and everything and then i think i started like getting kind of i don't know disheartened with it when they started just adding on all the maps like right after the game would come out it'd be like it wasn't too long and then it's just like oh new map pack is out and, like, the first time it was kind of cool, and then it's just like, oh, another map pack is out. So then you just feel like, you know, oh, I only have the original levels, and it just became too much. I don't know. For some reason, it just, like, stopped being fun, kind of, you know? I think they just took it too serious and tried to get too crazy with it and instead of just kind of keeping it what it was. They just seem like they were kind of more serving the clans and the teams and, and, and yeah. like the bigger experiences. And maybe they, yeah. that's what they left us more casual people behind, except for Chachi. Space. <laughs> yeah. What can I say? I, I'm good at the game. I wouldn't <laughs> say I'm ready to go pro, but I mean, I, I wasn't afraid. The, uh, I'll admit, there was one night where I just completely rage quit and lost it and just shut the Xbox off and went to bed. But, I mean, other than that, I can get into any game and hold my own. If, if you went pro, what would your uh, competition sc uh, screen name be? Chachi says. Okay. I, I, wouldn't, I wouldn't change my name just because I went pro. Be like, four kills. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I can see what you're saying, though, sort of. I, I feel that, that, you know, with all the clans and the people who, like, you know, take a game like that, like, really serious, you know, I mean, a lot of us just used to play, like, on the weekend, like, Friday and Saturday night for a couple hours, you know, it'd be fun, but, you know. And, and there, there was definitely that level of, um, because some of us wouldn't hit every Friday night, but by the mm -hmm. time some of us would pop in, everybody was so far advanced, or there was map packs, or there was this, and yeah. there was a lot of le le leaving friends behind. The yeah. map packs are what did it for most of us, I yeah. think. Yeah. Nobody would get the map packs, and everybody would just be like, oh, "I'm done." Yeah, you know, that's what it was, man. Or if you didn't buy the like the you know upgraded version when it came out, that gave you like a, an extra level or two or something. Mm -hmm. like that. You know, I don't know. I think I think the peak of it with all of us was Modern Warfare Two. Yeah, because they they had levels like Rust and and just small com contained levels, you know. I don't know. Yeah, Black, Ops, Black Ops was pretty pretty big with us too. I think though. Mm -hmm. I mean, they didn't really have a, a level like that in the, in the last one at all. Mm -hmm. like they were all giant levels. Yeah. You, 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 the, the the best were those those frantic levels, like the boats. Oh yeah, yeah the the boat ones. Yeah, yeah. Both of those were fun. Yeah, it was fun when you could go in a level and basically, you know, you couldn't really you know, find that spot where you could, you know, camp too much or anything like that. Mm -hmm. Or, you know, even if you were like a badass at the game, there was no way you could really hide out in a place and get too many kills, yeah. you know, without it being crazy. I think with the bigger levels, you know, it's it's more, you know, not for the casual gamer that's just going in there to play to just kind of have a good time and whatever, kill everything that moves. It's more, you know, for expert people who are actually going to, 
to take it pretty serious and sit there and kind of, you know, use sniper rifles and stuff and get their spots and everything. And I don't know, rust with their grenade launcher was like the greatest time. <laughs> <of all. laughs> I think, yeah. I think, I think they should have, uh, they jumped the shark when they took favela out. Yeah. My favorite level. Favorite level, man. Favorite level. So, all right, that's going to do it for us this week. Uh, we want to th- thank our special guest, Mikey. Uh, you can check him out every morning on iHeartRadio uh, from 6 to 10 a.m. on 96.1 KISS. Uh, do you have any plugs, Mikey? No, I uh, don't. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Don't follow me. Don't find me. <laughs> <laughs> well, you can find they can find you on Xbox One now, though. <laughs> uh, no, they can't because I don't even have an Xbox One yet. I'm still. Oh on- no. <laughs> well, they can they can view your vines on Xbox One now. <laughs> <laughs> if they want, to, if they choose to do that. Maybe yeah. I'll get an Xbox One for Christmas, but basically it'd just be a Madden machine at this point. I don't feel like starting over yet on my cards. <laughs> Madden and Vine. Yeah. <laughs> All right. You can follow us on Twitter on at InsertCoinTV. You can visit InsertCoinToBegin.com. Uh, new articles going up daily, and you can join us live each and every Tuesday night at 8 o'clock on live.sorgatronmedia.com. For at Sorgatron, at Chachi Says, I'm at Bobby F. J. Town. Game over, everybody. This show is a member of the Sorgatron Media Podcast Network. Find out more at sorgatronmedia.com. Let's talk tech. Tech news discussions from the people in the industry right here in Pittsburgh. Online, gadgets, startups, and more. Check it out at awesomecast.net.